Hello, in this video, we're going to talk about oncogenetics, um, the mechanism of cancer from a gene point of view. In order to understand this, we have to learn again about the cell cycle. So a normal cell can just be at rest. This is at a quiescent phase, the G0 phase. The cell can then enter the cell cycle. The first phase of the cell cycle is known as the G1 phase, the growth phase. This is where the cell's organelle duplicates. So here you can see the mitochondria of the cell is duplicated. After the growth one phase is the S phase, also known as the synthesis phase. This is when the DNA duplicates. After the S phase, there is a G2 phase where the cell essentially um, grows again, the growth phase. Um, and prepares itself for the M phase. The M phase is also known as mitosis, where a cell, which is now uh, ready, essentially divides into two identical daughter cells. These new cells can then re-enter the cell cycle or go back to the G0 phase. Now, the cell cycle is, as it, as it looks, a continuous cycle. However, things can go wrong throughout the cell cycle. And so it's important to have checkpoints to make sure that there are no problems along the way. The first checkpoint is actually at the end of the G1 phase called the G1 checkpoint. This is to make sure that there's no problems in the DNA and in the cell itself. The second checkpoint is at the G2 checkpoint. This is to make sure that the cell has no problems before it enters mitosis. And then there's another checkpoint at the M phase as well. The cell cycle is a continuous progression from G1, S, G2, and M. But what actually drives the cell through the cell cycle? Well, when a cell enters the cell cycle, it will start making proteins, allowing it to go and progress through the cell cycle. These proteins are your cyclins and your CDKs, which are the drivers of the cell cycle. So, for example, a cell wants to enter the cell cycle. The cell will start producing proteins, the CDK and cyclins. In the early G1 phase, CDK4 and 6 uh, are produced. And when cyclin D binds onto this, it will cause a reaction to occur inside that cell. It will cause E2F to detach from the retinoblastoma protein. When E2F is released, it acts like a transcription factor, allowing that particular cell to progress through to the S phase. However, at the end of the G1 phase, before the S phase, there's also another CDK and cyclin, CDK2 and cyclin E. Once at the S phase, the cell will produce another CDK and cyclin, CDK1 and 2, and even cyclin A. And then at the G2 phase, again, CDK1 and cyclin B. And these CDK and cyclins, again, will allow the cell to progress through the cell cycle. So CDK and cyclins are the drivers of the cell cycle. If you have too low amounts of CDK and cyclin, the cell doesn't really progress through the cell cycle. But if you have too much cyclin and CDK, then you get these cells that continuously enter the cell cycle and thus you get this uncontrolled growth of cells. And this is one of the mechanisms of cancer. So what can potentially cause uh, an increase in CDK and cyclin within the cell? So this is where genetic mutations come in. So the mechanism of cancer, genetic mutations. So let's just look at this normal cell and pull out its genetic material, which is DNA. DNA is a double-stranded helix made up of four types of nucleotides. Now, mutations can occur within the DNA, which will cause changes to that cell. Some types of mutations include point mutations, a single change in a nucleotide. Another is what's called DNA amplification. When a certain gene gets amplified so many times, it could be a bad gene, for example. Then there's another one called chromosomal rearrangement, where the chromosome basically attached to one another uh, where, where it shouldn't. And another one is called epigenetic modifications, such as methylation and acetylation um, above genes. And this can es essentially silence certain genes and even cause genes to become more, more active. And so you can imagine with these mutations, a normal cell can become a cancerous cell. 
And so when the cell enters the cell cycle, you get an uncontrolled cell growth. It bypasses all the checkpoints, you get uncontrolled cell growth. And these uncontrolled cell growth is essentially caused by two main changes that occurs in cancer cell. These are one, activation of oncogenes, such as the RAS gene and your MYC gene. The other change is the inactivation of tumor suppressor genes, such as inactivation of P53, APC, and BRCA1 and 2. So the mechanism of uncontrolled cell growth, as we discussed, the point mutations, the gene amplification, the chromosomal rearrangements, the epigenetic modifications, these mechanisms of uncontrolled cell growth essentially uh, causes two main things uh, in the cancer cell. These are activation of oncogenes and inactivation of tumor suppressor genes. So now let's look at each of these in a bit more detail, beginning by looking at oncogenes first. So let's begin by looking at oncogene activation, looking at the RAS and MYC gene as an example. So let's look at this cell here that's about to enter the cell cycle at the G1 phase. Now, normally, normally our cell contains DNA and normally our cells contain a gene called the RAS gene. Now, the RAS gene makes the RAS protein, which basically is an intracellular protein that sits below the plasma membrane. Next to it is a receptor, the growth factor receptor. Now, obviously, normally, when a cell enters a cell cycle, there, needs, there is a growth factor, uh, the growth factor receptor. When the growth factor is stimulated, it will actually uh, activate the RAS protein. Once the RAS protein is activated, it will cause a cascade of intracellular phosphorylation of other proteins, which will essentially, at the end, activate a transcription factor. Once this transcription factor is activated, it will essentially go to the DNA um, and read the genes to make proteins, to make proteins for cell growth, particularly to make proteins uh, to allow this cell to go from the G1 phase to the S phase. And these proteins are the CDK and cyclins we talked about. So you can imagine what would happen if you have a mutation in the RAS gene. When you have a mutation in the RAS gene, you are making actually RAS proteins which are already activated. And so you get always this cascade of phosphorylation events, and you always get the activation of these transcription factors. And so you are overproducing at the end these proteins for cell growth, such as the cyclins and CDKs. Now the MYC gene is another one. The MYC gene normally makes proteins in our body. These proteins are important for cell growth, cell survival, and also cell activity. And so when you have a mutation of the MYC gene, the cell becomes more cancerous. You get more cell growth, more cell activity, and more cell survival. And so activation of these oncogenes, activation of the RAS gene and the MYC gene, for example, will allow a cell to bypass the checkpoints of the cell cycle and will allow the cell to have an uncontrolled cell growth. Now, normally the cell has a mechanism to stop any abnormal cells from progressing to the cell cycle. This is where tumor suppressor genes come in. So for example, let's just say the cell gets held up at the G2 phase because it has an abnormal DNA. It has a damaged DNA. This cell that was stopped with the damaged DNA will not progress through the cell cycle because it, it is abnormal. It has a damaged DNA. So now let's talk about how this happened. Let's talk about tumor suppressor genes uh, normally, focusing on P53. So let's zoom into this cell. The cell contains damaged DNA. When there's damaged DNA, uh, the cell produces P53 proteins, which can act like a transcription factor. It will read the DNA and will actually make proteins. It will make proteins for cell arrest, such as P21. What does P21 do? Well, P21 is a protein that causes cell arrest. It actually inhibits the CDK and cyclins, and thus it inhibits the drivers of the cell cycle, so the cell cycle will not progress 
E53 will also make proteins important for cell repair. And so hopefully when the cell is arrested, uh, the cell can repair itself. It can repair the DNA. The P53 protein will also make proteins important for apoptosis. If the cell cannot repair itself, it has to die because we don't want any abnormal cells. So you can imagine now if you have inactivation of tumor suppressor genes, such as inactivation of P53. When you have inactivation of P53, you are not making proteins for cell arrest. You're not making proteins for uh, cell repair. You're not making proteins for apoptosis. And so you have this cell that enters the cell cycle and can bypass the checkpoints and continuously grow and proliferate. And so in summary, the genetic changes that occur in um, cancer are the inactivation of the tumor suppressor genes and the activation of the oncogenes. And so you have this cell that enters the cell cycle and can bypass the checkpoints and continuously grow and proliferate. I hope this video was helpful. Thank you for watching.